Hey guys, it's made by From Software, the people that are responsible for the Dark Souls games. If you played those, which are multi -pla uh, multi platform, you can get them on the PC or the PS3 or the uh, Xbox 360. For some reason, this game, Demon Souls, is not multi platform. It's been out since, let's see, 2009 here, and it's only ever been on the PlayStation 3 for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but this is a game that came before Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Technically, Dark Souls and or technically Dark Souls and Dark Souls Two aren't sequels; they're spiritual successors. Uh, for some reason they didn't continue the franchise of Demon's Souls, so it just became Dark Souls. So that's why, if you ever played those games, a lot of the stuff is so similar: the items and the weapons and the attacks and how you control your character and. Well, a lot of it, pretty much. I think there's even uh, references in the Dark Souls games to Demon Souls here. But we're going to go ahead and go through Demon Souls on the PS3 here. It's going to be... Uh, I'm going to do as best as I can to make it a decent walkthrough here. I'm not going to get everything, because honestly, I'm just not that good. But I will try to show off a fair amount. And uh, let's get started, shall we? Uh, so let's go for a new game. Uh, I'm going to be playing an offline for most of the parts, um, simply for the fact that... Uh, It'll be easier to accomplish certain things. I will go online and show off invading and stuff like that every once in a while, but uh, it's not going to be terribly frequent. Alright, so we're going to go offline mode right now, and let's go ahead and make our characters here. Um, I'll explain the stats when we get in-game, but for now, um, if we go to class here, there are a bunch of different classes. There's soldier, knight, hunter, priest, magician, wanderer, barbarian, thief, Temple Knight and Royalty. Uh, they all start with uh, slightly different stats. As you can see, Soldier is uh, good in Vitality and Endurance and Strength, while Royalty is good in Intelligence, Dexterity, Magic, and Faith. So yeah, everybody has their own specialties, like uh, Hunter, good Endurance and Dexterity, Priest, good Strength and Vitality, Faith, so, yeah, every, every class has their specific stats they start out with. But you can make um, something like something like a uh, magician into a pretty decent uh, physical attacker. It'll just take a few soul levels, which is your levels for the game, to do so. But um, for right now, we're going to go through the classes that I'm not going to play through. Uh, just because we can get a good idea for how their various weapons work. Um, and also just to give an idea of the class. So let's go ahead and go for a soldier here first. So let's just uh, enter a name, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. J, sounds good to me. All right, so I'm going to skip all the uh, intro videos and stuff for this for these uh, characters that I'm not going to be playing as. And then once we do get to the character that I will be playing as, we'll uh, watch all those. Um Turning to the Nexus. If you've already beat the intro on the on on a character on your um, gamer tag or PlayStation ID or whatever, uh, you can choose to skip this little tutorial area. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through it. Oh, that reminds me. I will I will be mentioning any trophies that I managed to get uh, in my test run that I did here because I was playing this a little bit just to make sure I got uh, some of the stuff down, but. Uh, yeah, let's get started here with, what is this guy, the soldier, I forget, um, yeah, soldier, okay, so let's go over the stats real fast, okay, um, class, doesn't really matter, class, uh, it's just basically your starting stats and your starting equipment, uh, gender, there is, uh, male and female specific, um, armor, but most of it is unisex, but it'll point out in the item description whether or not, Anybody can equip it, or just males or females can equip it. Alright, so vitality affects your health and the amount of items you can carry. Um, the amount of items you can carry doesn't really matter as long as you don't go over it. So, f starting off right here as the warrior or soldier, uh, we can uh, have up to 98 points of item. I'm just going to call them pounds. So, and same thing with the equip burden. I'm just going to call them pounds just to make it easier. So yeah, you can have up to 98 pounds of uh, item burden right there. And as long as you don't go over that, you're going to move at a normal speed. If you, if you try to go over it, you're going to uh, not be able to run. And if you try to roll, you're going to just kind of stumble and not going to do a whole lot. So you want to make sure that your item burden is below that maximum at all times. 
intelligence. It increases your magic power used for casting spells, and the number of spells you can remember um, to have on you to cast. So, like, when you get spells, you equip them, and uh, I think at maximum level for spells, you can have something like six, I think, and then maybe a few extras from rings. Um... And some spells will take up more than one spell slot. So, like, a basic spell, like, uh, Fireball, let's just say, I'm not even sure that's a spell in the game, because I don't really do magic that much. Uh, a basic spell like Fireball will take up one slot, but if you do, like, Super Mega Ultra Inferno or some shit like that, it'll take up two or three slots out of your, out of your five or six slots that you have. So, yeah, it does cap out, though, so just watch out for that. Um, Endurance affects your stamina, your... Equipment burden and resistance to fire, poison, and bleeding. Um, yeah, so basically it affects your defense a little bit. Oh, by the way, anytime you go up a uh, soul level here, when you, which is whenever you uh, spend your souls to get levels, um, your defense and your, let's see, I think your, uh, your physical defense, your magic defense, your fire resistance, and the amount required to go up a level all increase. So, that's, that's guaranteed no matter what you increase. But anyways, uh, endurance, okay. Stamina, if you look over here, that's basically uh, anything you do if you're uh, running fast or if you dodge or if you attack, then that's going to take up some of your stamina right there. If you get attacked and you block it with a shield, that's going to take up some of your stamina right there. So, the more stamina, the better pretty much, um, especially for melee characters. You can probably get away with a lower amount for mage types, simply for the fact that you'll be... Uh, back more often you don't have to you'll be trying to stay away from the enemies but for melee that's definitely important and it also affects your equipment burden um, I'll go over equipment burden uh, once we actually start doing stuff uh, strength straight up just affects how much your attacks do dexterity again same thing except it also reduces a slight amount of uh, damage when you fall because um, you do take fall damage in this game and the higher you fall the more damage you take, and if you fall high enough, you die outright. So, and also um, something else between strength, 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 and dexterity, different weapons uh, will require different amounts of strength, dexterity, magic, or faith to equip and to use. And if you try to equip something that you don't have enough strength or dexterity or magic or faith from, it'll say you cannot uh, effectively wield this weapon. And then the stats on it when you do use it are going to be massively lowered until you're stats are caught up to where they need to be. Also, for strength specifically, if you um, two-hand a weapon, like let's say a sword, then that'll reduce the strength requirement by half and also increase the attack power while two-handing by 50%, I think. So, that's pretty nice. Uh, like I said, dexterity strength, very good for melee characters. You can choose to focus on one or the other. So, like, you can choose to go on a all weapons that require strength and just not touch dexterity or magic or faith or you can choose to do it for dexterity or magic or faith you can actually upgrade some a lot of weapons to um, to uh, paths that let you use magic or faith as your primary uh, damage modifier for the weapon but we'll go into that later okay yeah uh, magic make affects how strong your spell power is basically so if you cast a fireball fireball at magic level Eight, then let's say let's just say it'll do 80 damage if you cast a fireball at magic level 20 it'll do like 200 damage or something like that uh, faith affects miracle power and the ability to remember miracles which are separate from spells spells are more offensive for the most part they do have a few uh, defensive capabilities whereas miracles is stuff like healing or teleporting you back to um, your safe place stuff like that and luck increases your plague resistance, which is a really bastard status. And also how often enemies drop items. It doesn't affect the quality of the items dropped. It just affects how many times, or it just affects their base chance to drop an item. So some people think that luck is a bad stat since, since if you raise it too much, yeah, you'll get more drops, but those drops will just be stuff you don't really care about whereas it won't really do a whole lot for the for the super rare drops if you get what I'm saying okay let's see uh, rings um, yeah you can wear two rings and they all have special effects some are good some are yeah in my opinion um, HP again the amount of damage you can take 
And notice how it says maximum is halved when in soul form. We'll go over that uh, later. MP, yeah, how much you have to cast miracles, spells, stuff like that. So, yeah, there we go. Pretty easy to remember. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Let's go check out some of our weapons real fast. Let's start off with the uh, broadsword. I'm just going to use this as a... Uh, demonstration here. Okay, if you see those four little symbols underneath the, where it says broadsword, uh, those are damage types. Uh, the first one with the little U is, is uh, normal damage type, which a lot of weapons will do. Um, the second one is, uh, I think, uh, blunt. The third is slashing, and the fourth is piercing, I think. Let me just make sure I got that right, because I think I did. Uh, yeah, let's see. Normal, blunt, slashing, and piercing. Um, yeah, there we go. And then, basically, uh, from there, where it says uh, physical attack, that's how much uh, attack power the sword has naturally. The plus five off to the side. If you look down where it says stat bonuses, you'll see that there's an E for the first slot, a D for the second slot, and nothing for the other two slots. Uh, if you recognize them from the stat page, E is, or the one, the one in front is strength, the next one is dexterity, and then magic, and then faith. So, on it, it scales in the order of E is the worst, and then D, C, B, A, and S. So, the higher those are, the better your stat bonuses are for the little right column there, assuming you have the high enough um, stats. So anything over, uh, let's, let's see, this one says it needs 10 strength, 10 dexterity to use. So since we currently have, by the way, press triangle to get to these other screens right here, uh, two endurance and, or two, two extra strength and one extra dexterity, that gives a slight bonus because of the low tier bonuses on the stats right there so that works out pretty good then special effects um, let's see I think that is bleeding for the red where it says a hundred purple is poison green is plague and then the last one is I'm not entirely sure actually let me, let me check here um, Yeah, I don't know all the stats here, but I do know a few of them here. Um, let's see where we got. You know, I'm honestly not sure what that last one is. And I don't think we can really check here. But anyways, um, I'm not really too terribly worried about bleeding, poison, or plague statuses because, or inflicting them because they inflict damage so slowly that it's not really worth it, especially for the uh, long fights, in, in my opinion. So not too terribly worried about those. Um, we're going to skip the uh, damage reduction and guard break reduction for right now because those are more for uh, shields. Um, stats needed, obviously. Again, same order as the stat bonuses. And then durability and weight, durability, how much you, um, it's not really how many times you can hit with the weapon or how many times you can get hit. It just slowly degrades as you take damage. It's not like you take one hit, you lose one point of durability. It's, I'm not sure how it works, actually, but uh, eventually it'll go down and you have to repair it. And then weight, how much uh, weight it is to equip. Hang on just a moment. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about uh, weapons for the most part. Um, now, as for shields, uh, same general difference. Um, most shields are going to be blunt damage, as you can see by that second icon right there. Um, and that's going to be for when you... Honestly, I'm not sure why it's there. I don't know if it counters into your... Uh, Carrying damage, but I, I don't think it does. So, not really sure why it's there. Yeah, most uh, shields have a uh, D bonus for strength, or I think usually strength, actually. 
Um, now as for the damage reduction right there, notice how it says 90 and then 30. Uh, that is percentage wise how much damage you're going to block whenever um, you hold your shield up and take an attack with your shield. Uh, the first number right there, let's see here. The first number right there is physical. And then there's also on the other side right there that is fire damage. And also there's a stat that they don't show you for some reason, I don't know why, um, that is magical damage. So most of those magical damages are going to be like, I think usually 30 or so, and then there's a few that are higher than that. So the way it works is, let's say you block a uh, you hold up your shield and somebody attacks you for 100 damage, you'd... Um, you'd only take 10 points of that damage instead of the full 100. But of course, if you miss it, then yeah, you take the full 100. Same thing with fire. You'd only take 30 damage instead of 100. Or, actually, no, in this case, you'd take 70 instead of 100. Uh, the guard break reduction is basically um, how easily enemies can break your uh, shield being held up with their strong attacks, and also how much stamina you lose when you block with your shield. Because, yeah, you do lose stamina when you block with your shield, and higher guard break reduction means less stamina loss. It's not really that big of a deal though, at least not that I've noticed, so I'm not going to be too terribly worried about it. And yeah, that's pretty much a uh, stats there. And then we got herbs and stuff like that. Um, Crescent Moon Grass, I think I think those restore, I think, 160 of your HP or something like that. It's something like that. Um, and then, yeah, notice how everything here has a weight on the right side of the screen there. 3.8, 9.6, 5.8, 5.8. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a minute here. And then here's all the defenses all laid out for you. Different different types of armor are going to be more effective against, like, uh, slashes or blunts or thrusting or fire or stuff like that. So most of the time, though, it's not going to be that big of a deal since if you take a, if you take a hit from a powerful enough enemy, you're going to die anyways. Especially early on in the game. I guess later on in the game it makes up for it. Or matters. But for now, not too terribly worried about it. But let's go ahead and get started here, shall we? Alright, so if you press if you press the left, that'll control the L button right there. Where it says L. Or I guess the, not the L button, but the L square. And yeah, it'll switch to the other item that you have equipped. Because if you look at our equipment here, um, you can have two items equipped in your left hand and two in your right hand and then your armor and then if you have um ranged weapons this is where the ammunition goes and the rings and then here are the five items that you can have in your your quick bar pretty much these uh these five right here yeah so let's see here we don't have anything else in our l in our left hand right now but if we press right on the right button there we go we can go up to our spear uh, same thing with the items down on the square button right there. Press down and you cycle through. If you press up, that cycles through your magic or your miracles. And we don't have any right now, so we're not too terribly worried about that. Let's see, L1, that holds up your shield. L2, we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, let's see, R1, it does attacks. R2 does strong attacks. Circle button, if you press it while standing still, you do a little back dodge there. Uh, if you if you hold it down while moving, you start running, and then if you if you just press it while running, you dodge. You do a little dodge roll right there. Notice how this dodge roll is a bit heavy right there. That's where equip burden comes in. If we look at our character here, we have 31.5 out of 41 equip burden. The way this works is if you're over 50% of your equip burden, so I guess in this case uh, 20.5, you're going to roll slow like that. If you're under, you're going to roll fast. Those are the only two speeds. So let's let's check it out real fast. Let's go. Let's take off some of our stuff here that weighs heavily. Let's see. Coat of plate. I know that's pretty heavy. So we need a little more off. Let's take off the... By the way, uh, arrows and bolts down here, these do not count towards your equip weight. Uh, let's go ahead and take off the gloves as well. And then, yeah, notice how much faster that roll is right there? That's a lot of the reason why, in my opinion, um, light armor is good for the beginning of the game. Since it'll not impact your rolling and it'll still protect you a little bit. I mean, early in the game, if you get hit, you're pretty much dead anyways. So, 
gotta watch out for that. Also, a few more things. If you uh, if you either roll forward or step backwards and then press the R1 button for your attack, you'll do an attack like that. I, th I think it is rolling. I think. Oh, okay, rolling. Okay, if you're if you're running, you press R1. It'll do the same as the. Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Running and the backwards and the R1 are the same. And then if you roll and then R1, you get a special attack right there. So yeah, different attacks based on how you're rolling or how you're running and all sorts of good stuff like that. Um, it doesn't affect your your uh, R2 attack, your strong attack, and I don't think it really affects your. By the way, in order to two-hand press the uh, triangle button. Let's see. I don't think it really affects your. Your, uh, I guess it does. I guess it does affect it. And what we got from that guy right there is souls. Uh, souls are the currency for buying stuff and the currency for leveling your character up. Uh, you cannot sell stuff to get more souls, unfortunately. You just gotta find them by defeating enemies and eating certain items, but we'll go into that uh, later. Alright, let's see if we can't do something here. So, this guy's gonna attack us, so we're gonna try to time it with our L2 button to parry. Come on. Let's stay locked on. There you go. Yeah, I didn't do it right. Uh, okay, that damn fern is in the way. Alright, let's see here. There you go. That's how you parry them and you attack right away. You do a nice uh, critical hit right there. Um, as far as I know, critical hits are only done from parrying like that or from getting behind them and backstabbing them. Some weapons do say you can critical hit it with a well-timed strike, but uh, I'm not sure how to activate those, so I never managed to get them. And you actually have to you actually have to parry in order to get the uh, to get the critical hit. You can't just uh, miss the parry and then expect it to still work. By the way, I'm taking a lot of damage here on purpose. Cause watch, they can't kill me right now in this tutorial level. The only person in this tutorial that can kill me is at the very end of the tutorial. So. Let's just sit here and watch our health go down to one, and yeah, they're just gonna keep wailing us. So they can't kill me right now, which is pretty cool. But at the same time, you still want to try not to get hit too much before the end of the tutorial. Otherwise, you are just not gonna have any. Uh, you're gonna have to use all your healing potions, and you'll be screwed. Or you can just not even worry about it at all. All right, so now we're gonna switch to using the spear. Yeah, no, uh, the spear is one of my favorite weapons, and I'm going to be using one of these later. Uh, my main reason for liking the spear is you can attack with your shield up. Notice how his, uh, his shield doesn't get lowered when we when we jab our spear forward. Very nice. And plus, it doesn't swing around a whole lot. It doesn't like it doesn't like try to hit against the wall right there or nothing like that. So gotta watch out for that. And if you try to attack with your shield up with the sword, well, you move the shield out of the way and you can be attacked. Uh, something to uh, look out for though is when you do have your shield up um, your stamina does regenerate a little more slowly so you gotta watch out for that that's the only really downside to using spears in my opinion but it still works out pretty good and then let's see we got the uh, we got the little the little thrust forward attack for our uh, R1 uh, the R2 you do a little overhead right there which is pretty nice there's our back dodge, which is actually pretty good if you can get it down pretty well. And then the rolling attack, yeah, it's a little hard to get used to, but for the most part, I just stick with the uh, R1 and the R2, and then uh, two-handing. Two-handing does make it a bit more unwieldy, especially the, uh, the two-handed attack right there. You do a little jump right there, but I use it every once in a while. Alright, so let's go ahead and get rid of this guy here, and let's check out... Uh, some of the other characters that we can use. Mainly I'm showing off these characters just for the fact that we can um, check out the various weapons at the start here. Just to give you an idea of the various weapons, uh, how they all attack and stuff like that. Because like I said, all the weapons attack differently. Okay, I don't know why it takes forever to delete a character here, but oh well. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Let's see, we started off as soldier last time, so let's go for knight. And let's see what he's got. By the way, um, 
Yeah, I'll mention it later since it's not really that important since we're not going to be using the character. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go to the Nexus. Uh, not the Nexus, actually. We'll worry about the Nexus later. Alright, so this guy again has heavy armor, but he has a better shield. He has a kite shield, which is uh, pretty good, actually. If I'm not mistaken, I think it actually reduces 100% of physical damage. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. So, much better shield overall. Um, and I think his armor is actually better than the warriors, too. The downside is he doesn't have quite as much uh, health or endurance, pretty much. Alright, so he's got a long sword, which is different from a... Which is different from the uh, broadsword or short sword or whatever we had. With, I think it was broadsword with the warrior. It has mostly the same attacks, but it can be upgraded differently. That's the main thing. I, I think the, uh, yeah, the, the attacks are mostly the same for for straight swords. Cause that, that's what the broadsword and this uh, long sword are classified as, are straight swords. Let's see, if you two-hand it. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Oh, by the way, something I forgot to mention. It When you, uh, when you do your strong attack with a sword, that counts as piercing damage. Normally, swords count as, I think, slashing damage, I think. Oh, I guess the long sword counts as uh, normal damage. But I think the broad sword did count as slashing. But yeah, the R2 attack, that does count as piercing. And I think that's the only uh, part of the sword attacks that counts as piercing. And then for his other weapon, he has a, I think this is a Mailbreaker. Yeah, Mailbreaker. And the Mailbreaker is a Rapier. And Mailbreakers, Rapiers, are basically like, uh, well, I guess we could say that uh, Spears are long-range versions of Rapiers. They're, they're piercing, they attack straight ahead. You can uh, you can attack while your shield is up. So yeah, they're pretty nice actually. They do they don't have very good range, which is why I prefer spears. But uh, they are pretty decent actually. They're not great. Yeah, that's a strong attack right there. You got your little forward jab. Yeah, notice how notice how awkward it is to do your roll attack when you're burning down like this. Let's see if we can't get a few. Uh, Trying to get a few, a few parries in here. Hey. There we go. Yeah, so rapiers, pretty good. Long swords, yeah, a little more powerful than the broadsword. It's slightly different damage type, but mostly, mostly pretty good. All right, so this guy, we don't really care about him anymore. So let's get out of here. I'll go more in depth on other parts of the game later. For now, I just want to show off these uh, various uh, characters, uh, weapons, and stuff. Alright, so. Nope, go away. Stab it. Alright, let's go ahead and. Let's go priest again. I know I'm working on the name. Dang it! Go away. It looks like it's just not Jay's lucky day today because he's just getting deleted all over the place. Poor guy. And all these characters that you see on the loading screens, they'll eventually show up in game, and you'll be able to meet them or deal with them or however you want to call it. Alright, so the priest, he starts with a mace right here, a I think a heater shield, and a talisman, which enables him to use the miracles. And he starts off with the heal miracle, which re uh, restores your HP, obviously. So that's pretty nice, actually. He's got pretty decent uh, chainmail armor. It is heavy, somehow, and can't roll that well but uh he does start off with a nice blunt weapon with decent strength and he can do pretty good damage and he can heal himself so he's he's pretty good for surviving 
if you want to do a melee class that has uh, self-healing right off the bat, a priest is pretty good, in my opinion. You gotta probably take off a few pieces of armor to get that fast roll, but other than that, he's pretty good. Let's see if we can't uh, clobber this guy with a nice counter here. Yeah, that wasn't the right timing, unfortunately. And neither was that, but oh well. Um, something you'll notice is that... Actually, no, probably not going to say anything yet. But uh, let's see here. R2. Nice overhead power, power swing there. Lots of damage. And if we two-hand it... Yeah, you just start wailing on people there. So yeah, the, the mace is actually a pretty decent weapon, and it does blunt damage, so that's pretty nice. It's good overall, but I'm not going to stick with the priest right now. By the way, if you want to see the heal spell in action, uh, by the way, you press the triangle, but not, sorry, when you have the talisman equipped in order to cast your miracle, you press the R1 button. I don't think pressing the R2 works. Yeah, R2 just lets you kind of try to stab with the uh, talisman, and you can do some damage with it, but it's not going to do a whole lot. So, yeah. And there we go. There's the heal miracle. Heal miracle. It's nice and um, nice, I guess. It's not really fast, unfortunately, but you got to do what you got to do. Let's see here. Let's go for Magician. Yeah, Kay's gonna die today. I guess it's just gonna be a uh, minute black characters that kick the bucket. Sorry, guys. I don't know if we can get that particular sword in game. I don't. I don't think we can. If we can, I don't know where it is. Okay, but the magician, strangely enough, he starts off with a short sword. I guess in this case he run out, runs out of mana, and then he also starts off with a catalyst for using his magic up there. And he starts off with two spells: water veil, which reduces fire damage you take, and flame toss, which well shoots fire down an enemy. And let's see, this is the the wooden catalyst right there. Dang it. Notice how it scales with the uh, magic power instead of anything else. So there we go. I guess it does have a slight attack you can use on it, but it's not really that useful, I guess. So, whatever. I don't know why it doesn't say it has a... Uh... Oh, I guess the uh, spell assist right there, that, that increases the spell power. Like I said, I don't use magic attacks that much, so I'm not too terribly familiar with them. I've used the heal spell a little bit, but that's pretty much it. See, the small sword is pretty much like the uh, broadsword or the long sword, as you can see. Nothing really special. And then if we go for our flame toss, again, use the R1 button to attack. By the way, uh, in order to lock onto an enemy, press the R3 button. I probably should have mentioned that. And then let's just cast our nice little flame spell at him. And there you go. Yeah, magic does do a pretty good amount of damage, that's for sure. And it makes the it can actually make the game really really easy, as, at least with the the one time I did try a character just to finish the uh, tutorial area here. And let's just say I had a really easy time with it. Yeah, you, you don't even have to get close to these guys. You can just roast them, and yeah, really really easy. Let's just say that stuff that it took me seven or eight tries as a melee character took me one try as a magic character. So, but, eh, not really feeling the magic in this game too much. I mean, it is very powerful, but uh, I do like the melee aspects. By the way, I guess I haven't been checking out these guys' stats. Um, let's see, Magician obviously needs high intelligence so he can cast a lot of spells or a lot of mana. Endurance, strength, eh, not that great. He just has enough to... And dexterity. He has just enough to wield a sword. 
Magic is good. Faith, he doesn't really deal in miracles, but you can if you want to. So, he doesn't need it. Luck, he's going to get some decent items. So, nothing really too special about the Magician. There is a better Magic class you can start out as, and we'll check him out in a minute here. But uh, for now, we got other stuff to check out. And unfortunately, it does give you the message of uh, you're either starting in online mode or you're not going to be in online mode. Or... It always gives you some stupid message at the beginning of uh, any time, pretty much. By the way, uh, the stats we missed out on the priest, like I said, for some reason he has a pretty decent strength stat. I guess he needs it for being physical. And then decent stats all around except for dexterity and magic, and I guess luck. So... He'll be good for a very strength-oriented melee character with the heal spell. Uh, knight, very average, very good stats, actually. Um, something that's good about the knight is he is one of the characters that can that can have a... Um, what is it? A spell and a miracle at the start of his journey if he if he wants to learn them, because he has the stats for it. In order to either have a spell or a miracle, you need 10 intelligence and either 10 magic or 10 faith. So he has enough for one of each, pretty much. And then soldier, uh, good defensive stats, and then decent offense. But anyways, we're going for the Wanderer now, which is a very high dexterity class with a very high luck stat. And then average stats everywhere else. Let's see, he starts off with, oh, this is a, I think this is a falchion, or something like that. Yes, a falchion, okay. This is a curved sword, as opposed to a straight sword. And then he also starts off with a dagger. Doesn't start off with very much armor, but uh, he'll live. He, this is a very uh, hard class to play, as you can the fact that he doesn't have a lot of armor, and his uh, stats aren't fantastic, I guess. Let's see, yeah, the curved sword. A lot of similar attacks to uh, straight swords, but uh, a bit more slashing to it, I guess. And I think that actually counts as a slash attack, not a pierce attack. Let me check. Um, yeah, he's, he's all he's all about the slashing attacks here with the uh, with the falchion here. So good weapon. Oh, and I think since I think since it is a uh, curved sword, if I can ever put it on. Yeah, curved swords for some reason. If you put them in the, if you put them in the um, the left-handed weapon slot, you can actually use them to parry enemies. I think, but, but um, if you try to like block with them, which I don't think you can do, it will use the guard reduction damage on the weapons in order to determine how much damage you're gonna take. But obviously, shields are gonna be better for that. So. I guess it's good if you want to dual wield and you want to try to parry with the falchion in your your uh, your left hand, but I'm not really too concerned about that since shields are better in every way. So yeah, the falchion is a good, quick uh, curve sword there. And then, let's see, the dagger, as you can probably guess, very fast, doesn't use a lot of stamina, but as we'll see, doesn't it also doesn't use a... Uh, it also doesn't do a total lot of damage unless you're um, backstabbing or parrying. So let's see, let's see how long it takes to take out this guy. Yeah, it's kind of weird you can two-hand a dagger. I don't know why, but uh, you can. Yeah, so that took four slashes right there to take him out right there. Whereas, like, the sword or the other weapons took, like, I think two or three. Let's see if we can't get this guy to, uh... So I want to parry one of these guys. Come on, hit me. Yep, there you go. Yeah, nice uh, parry damage right there. And then in order to backstab them, you need to get behind them, and then uh, you need to be still when you're attacking. Okay, you. 
Come on. So let's wait for him to attack here and then. Eh, screw it. Not gonna work too well. But yeah, the Wanderer is a pretty decent class. Just uh, his armor doesn't start off very good, I guess. He's good for like bows, since bows uh, scale usually pretty good with dexterity, but you have to find him a bow first, which isn't that hard to do, really. And we will be finding a bow very easily, but uh, yeah, he just doesn't have a whole lot of uh, equipment starting off, but he is good for a dexterity character, that's for sure. So let's check out other classes now. I realize I'm not going too terribly in depth with these guys, but like I said, we'll go over more stuff as we go along. I'm just showing off the weapons right now, that's all pretty much. That way you can decide like which weapons you like for yourself if you haven't seen them in action or anything like that. Right, let's see here, let's go for... Let's see... Let's go for Thief. He's almost the same as the Wanderer, like uh, stat-wise. Except the uh, Wanderer does have higher um, higher dexterity, and the Thief has higher luck. Other than that, most of their stats are pretty much the same. I guess Thief has a little more intelligence, but they're very similar. I think they both start off with a dagger. Thief does have a few slight advantages in my opinion, and we'll check it out right now, but uh, Either one will steer you in the right direction if you want to be a dexterity character. Alright, so he also starts off with a dagger, but I think he starts off with a... Nope, same dagger. But he also starts off with a short bow for range attacks. And he also starts off with a throwing knife, again, for range attacks right there. But uh, let's check out the... Uh, no, uh, he doesn't. We don't have it on our left hand. Uh, let's check out the bow. Something I like to do with the bow, you don't have to, but this is my personal preference, is I like to move the bow and the shield to the left hand right here. That way, you take it out with the left button, you get it ready to shoot with the L1 button, and then when you lock on, you can attack with the R1 button. But if you try to press the L1 button again, it goes into first person mode. Personally, um, I'm mainly a fan of locking on, mainly for the fact that it'll help uh, help with uh, targeting. But if an enemy is far enough away that you can't target him, then, or if you need to use the uh, manual aim, then yeah, you can just. Then you can just uh, manually aim for wherever you need to. But the problem with uh, manually aiming is it has like a slight veer to it for some reason. Like, uh, by the way, press up or down on the directional pad when you're in first person mode to zoom in your cursor there. And then use the right analog stick to move the cursor. But for some reason, arrows have a slight right curve to them. I don't know why. So. And they do take a second to fire. Yeah, for some reason they like to curve slightly to the right. I don't know why, they just do. But it's not really that big of a deal. The bows are very, very useful. I guess even for magic characters, even because you can't really aim magic spells, at least not that I'm terribly aware of. It's unfortunate, but oh well. We yeah, have the uh, Thief, very good class with the dexterity there. Um, again, he has light armor, uh, in this case, uh, dark leather, or I think it, actually it might be assassin gear, I forget, let's see, yeah, assassin and black leather, but, um, he's not gonna take a lot of damage, but he will do a fair amount of damage, just try not to get hit with him. Let's see here. Alright, a few more here. Let's see, Barbarian. Um, actually, you know what? Let me do something here. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play as the Barbarian here just for the fact that we 
don't want to waste up too much time. But uh, he starts off with no armor at all. He starts off with a... See that club he has in his hand right there? He starts off with two of those, and then he also starts off with his wooden shield. He doesn't start off with any other armor. He does start off with some uh, healing items, but uh, yeah, he's buck naked from the start there, except for what he's got. But as you can see, he has very high vitality and strength. For some reason he has, he has decent magic, which is kind of weird, but uh, Oh well, he has good endurance, uh, his dexterity can be bumped up a little bit, so he's pretty good if you want a strength character, just pure H, high HP, high stamina, high strength, so that's what he's good for. Alright, so let's go ahead and go over to the Temple Knight now, and let's see, we got to enter a name here. The Temple Knight, he also starts off with the Heal Miracle and a Talisman there. Um, he starts off with a Halberd here for his attacks. It kind of looks like a spear, but it's a pole arm, or I guess it's a pole. And they're okay, but my problem is they have a very wide swing when you attack with them. So, makes for a... It's not really great for uh, tight quarters, unless you two-hand it, and then you can... Uh, kind of poke with it I guess. It does have a lot of power but the whole swinging around thing just uh, doesn't really cut it for me. So that's why I prefer spears overall. Again he starts off with heavy armor so he can't really roll that well. And it's not a bad weapon it's just uh, not my preferred type I guess. If I, if I had to choose between a melee character that starts off with a heal spell, between this guy and a priest, I'd probably start off with the priest simply for the fact that uh, the uh, the mace that the priest has is easier to wield in my opinion. I mean, I guess you could get used to the halberd and be good with it, and I've seen people that are good with it, but uh, I just prefer the non huge massive swing weapons but as you can see he does have very good stats overall he's another one of the characters that can uh, almost use um, actually no I, never mind he's not one of the ones never mind um, I was gonna say he's the one that could use uh, magic spell and miracle but no he's not but very good vitality and endurance and strength and even pretty good dexterity so decent melee character but I prefer the priest overall but let's get out of here and check out the final character before our main character, which I will start on next episode. But don't worry, I will. Yeah, for some reason you can only can you can only uh, make four profiles per gamer tag or whatever. I don't know why it's just weird. But uh, if you want more, start a new gamer profile, or whatever. Right, let's get rid of Jay's. Um, I will I will upload these on the same day, that way it's not like you get one episode of all tutorials and have to wait another day for a new episode of actual playing the game, but um, I forget what I was going to that, but yeah, I'm not going to make you guys wait to watch the real meat of the game, if you, if, I guess I probably could put a note somewhere in the middle of the video that says if you don't want to I'll put it in the video description. If you don't want to bother watching a whole bunch of tutorial stuff, then skip to the next video after a certain point. Alright, but anyways, let's check out our final class here, Royalty, which is very widely considered to be one of the easiest classes to uh, play as. And you know what, just because you're so special snowflake, let's go ahead and call you R. And so you might have noticed, he starts off at a very low level. If you didn't notice, he starts off at soul level 1, aka the absolute lowest level you can possibly get to. But he makes up for it in several ways. He starts off with um, a rapier there, 
So that's pretty nice for attacking. He starts off with a shield, he starts off with a silver catalyst, and he starts off with the soul arrow spell. The silver catalyst, it's not as powerful as the wooden catalyst from earlier, but it does have the bonus of increasing your maximum magic points to nice high levels right there. So that's really nice. And also, this guy also gets the benefit of the silver coronet, which again, increases your maximum magic points right there. So really nice. And also, he gets the fragrant ring right off the bat, which recovers one MP per every couple I forget exactly how many, but it, it I think it's like every three or four seconds. It's not a whole lot, but if you don't feel like wasting your old spices, by the way, um, I guess we don't have any. Uh, spices are the MP recovery items of the game, whereas herbs and grasses are the HP recoveries. But yeah, notice how his um, mana is going up every couple seconds there? So yeah, you can just sit there, go make, go take a leak, go make a sandwich or something, and come back and your mana will be reasonably restored. So it's really good there. And let's see, if we take off... If we take off the silver catalyst and the silver coronet here, let's see what we got. So we have 116 now, so it goes down to 97, then it goes down to 81. So yeah, nice little boost right there. I think it's a, I think they're like 20% each. Uh, I can actually check that. Uh, let's see, silver coronet is, well it doesn't say, but I think, oh yeah, 20%. And then, it doesn't say, but I think it is 20% again. So yeah, really nice uh, starting gear for this guy. Uh, he's still not going to take a lot of hits, but it's really good for a mage. That's pretty much it. Um, I mean, heck, even if you wanted to go with a stronger catalyst, like the wooden one, just for the extra attack power, you'd still have um, 90 mana at the very start at level 1. So, if you keep on raising your intelligence and your magic powers, you're going to be doing really good with this guy. And despite the fact that he starts off as a um, mage-oriented character, he does have reasonably decent dexterity. So, if you wanted to just say, screw the magic and work on his dexterity, then you could do that. He would be pretty good. You'd have to put some points into endurance and vitality in order to actually be on the front lines, but it would work. And this guy is the guy I was thinking of that can also have um, one spell and one miracle at the start there because he has the stats for it. Let's see, Soul Arrow. I don't think Soul Arrow is as powerful as Fireball, but it'll still pretty much one shot anybody in this area here. So, yeah. Starts off really good. Yeah, he just tears through stuff with his uh, amp regeneration and his nice powerful spells. So this guy is definitely the magic class to go as opposed to Magician. Yeah, the Magician has the Fireball spell and the Water Veil spell and a slightly better um, and a slightly better catalyst for attacking there. But honestly, the soul arrow the soul arrow spell here does plenty of damage, and you get the passive MP regeneration and the extra MP, so it's just really good gear to start out at. Start out as, but I guess you could go either one. It's not going to really matter, but I would personally go with the royalty, and also because he starts off as the lowest soul, uh, soul level of one, he re he will require less uh, soul points to go to his next couple levels. Whereas opposed to the ones that start out as higher levels, will take just a little more souls to get there. It's not going to matter too much in the long run, but in the beginning of the game, it'll be the difference between being able to buy a few more herbs or having to spend it on a level up. So, it's up to you guys. But anyways, we went through all the classes that we are not going to be playing as. And next episode, we will go ahead and start off playing as the class that we are going to be playing as. So guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys then. Have a good night.